In this video, we're going over the Overwatch 2 Season 5 tank meta and breaking down all the compositions that are best and worst that you should be playing or avoiding this season. So if you enjoy the content, do me a solid and smash that like and subscribe and let's jump right into it. Now, the first tank that we got to talk about is definitely Zarya. And Zarya is in an interesting spot for quite a few reasons right now. She has good matchups against a lot of the Brawl tanks. If we're thinking about characters like Jericho Queen, Arissa, or even a character like Ramatra, she's perfectly fine against she also has extra game against characters like roadhog and characters like doomfist being able to peel a lot of what they're trying to do whether that's bubbling a hook or bubbling an engage from doom and in addition to that she is pretty good at shutting down poor divas or divas that don't have access to the high ground and don't play discipline on top of that i think that zara just gets extra props for being really really great in ranked play really dominant to be able to push through the enemy tank and shut down a player on like a mini aggressive push and she plays well with a lot of the meta supports right now and with the meta dps like cassidy all in all i think that she's pretty good she does have some fundamental weaknesses though in the fact that she can get dove past with characters like winston and from a power level point of view i think that there's other brawl tanks that might be able to get a little bit more value characters like junker queen all in all, I'm going to put her in the B tier. Nothing wrong with her, but still really strong. And of course, you can't really play her on a lot of the poke maps because Sigma is eating up all that pick rate. Now, next up, we do got to talk about Arissa. And Arissa is fine. I would say Arissa is kind of lukewarm. There's nothing really wrong with Arissa, but there's nothing really that amazing about her. And she definitely has a lot of bad matchups as well. She's going to be pretty easy to punish with characters like Mei characters like hanzo can abuse her giant freaking head hitbox you can play dive against her and dive past her with characters like winston really pick and choose your engagements with someone like diva abusing the high ground and characters like zara just beat her in the straight up brawl i do think that for the most part if you play really disciplined with orissa you can neutralize the enemy tank very well but as far as your carry potential it's limited and i do think that orissa is like a safe pick if you don't really know how to shut down the enemy tank and that tank is going crazy but more often than not this character isn't going to be a meta defining character by any means the power level is too low and i think really if you're going to be playing a character like this there's other characters on the roster in the tanking category that are just better at doing what you kind of want to do anyways so i'm just going to put her in the c tier nothing crazy wrong with her just not going to really be a meta pick more of a niche pick that you whip out in specific situations not something that you're just locking every game now we do got to talk about queen and queen did receive a big nerf she actually did receive a pretty sizable nerf but even though the shout is less and even though you're generating less ultimate this doesn't fundamentally change the placement of this character she's still very very strong i think that it's more competitive now with the top tanks that you could be playing but she's still insanely powerful and i would still say that she's one of the best tanks in the entire game right now but you got to understand that you can't play brawl on every single map a lot of the enabling behind junker queen needs a team that is willing to play with you and go with you and i don't necessarily think you're gonna find that as much in ranked and i do think also junker queen does have some key weaknesses she still is vulnerable to characters like may she could be annoyed by characters like tracer she's weak to discord from zen there's several weaknesses to the character but overall i do think that the character is one of the best characters to be playing right now and i definitely would suggest to play her if you're looking for a tank to hard carry plays well with cassidy plays well with anna I'm, I'm putting her in the S tier, although I don't think that she is the best tank in the game right now. We'll talk about that in a second. Now we do got to talk about Reinhardt. Reinhardt is another tank that's in a strange spot. For the metal ranks, he's still one of the best tanks to be playing, period. He's incredibly powerful in the metal ranks. Just having that shield, having the ability to shatter, super, super strong. But really, Ryan has a lot of competition for his spot. And it's not really that clear what matchups he even has an advantage in. I think a lot of matchups are skill-based, but there's many matchups that can kind of just abuse him a lot. A D.Va can completely avoid him. Several dive characters can just dive past him. Sigma can poke him out. Ramatra can poke him out. Junker Queen can many times beat him straight up in a 1v1 brawl. This doesn't mean that Ryan isn't good. It just means that you're not getting a ton of value from being like the brawl god anymore. And there's other comp competitions in the comp that you are played in, right? Because some characters, some tanks can be played in multiple compositions. Let's take a character like Ramatra that can be played in like a brawl comp, a poke comp, a flex comp, whatever the case may be. 
grind is a brawl and there's other characters that are brawl but you're really competing with characters like Arissa and Zarya and Junker Queen for that spot and it's not really clear who is the better one and if you're good at Junker Queen, most of the time you should just be playing her instead. I would say that he's still in the B tier. Still strong, has powerful abilities, powerful impact potentially, but he definitely tailors off as you climb into the higher ranks of play. The higher in ELO you go past Masters, I think the weaker in Riki becomes. Still viable, but not nearly as strong as some of the upper picks. Next up, we do got to talk about D.Va. And I think that if we only were talking about the most top tier of ranked play i would probably put diva diva in the s tier i think she's super super strong she plays well with a lot of what's seeing play she's really good at shutting down characters like ash characters like hanzo characters like cassidy which is all plus right but not every map is going to have high ground that you can abuse there's going to be some brawl maps that are not gra that great for you there's going to be some poke maps that are not that great for you so on the maps where you have a high ground to abuse, she's definitely one of the best things to be doing. But for the most part, I say that she's probably A. Really, really strong. Does have maps that she's not the best on. But uh, I think that if you were one tricking only one character, she would be one of the two characters I would suggest. The second one we'll talk about in a little bit. But she is incredibly strong. And I do think that she deserves A tier. Now we do got to talk about Roadhog. Roadhog's still waiting for that re rework, right? He did get a buff. He did get a buff where... Now he's he's more likely to survive. He can get more heal, but it doesn't fundamentally change what's wrong with this character. He doesn't have consistent one shots. He's kind of like a giant old battery for the enemy team. I know he gives them less ultimate charge, but it doesn't really matter. He's too easy to counter with characters like Ana. There's too many things that could shut down your hook. I mean, come on. This character is 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 not really any better post these buffs that just happened than he was before. If we look at the entire tanking lineup, most tanks just like don't care what Roadhog is doing. There's so many DPS that just have the means to fight against him. If you're a god with the hooks, or if you're playing on a map that you can get people hooked off the map, then sure, we, we could talk about putting you maybe in the C tier. But for most people, and realistically, he's too easy to counter. He's just going to be a D tier pick. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hog mains, but we're still waiting on more reworks for the character. They will come with time, but for now... Roadhog just doesn't, it just isn't it, isn't it, just not it, unfortunately. We do gotta talk about Sigma, and uh, most of you know where I'm gonna put Sigma. Sigma's an S-tier character. S-tier character has been, still is, he's just gonna be the tank that is played on all the poke maps. I think that there's a lot of maps that he should be played on that he isn't. He just plays so well with and against a lot of the hit skins that are seeing play. He plays really well with Cassidy. He plays really well with Ash. He plays well with Hanzo. And especially because if you could take like a like an aggressive angle with like a cast, all of a sudden you have Hinder, you have Rock, and now you can just like completely shut down anybody combined with your Cassidy, which is so freaking strong. You're just applying a ton of pressure. I think that you could take over an entire game with this character. Now, of course, on a lot of the Koth maps, he's not going to be the best because Sigma wants to fight linearly, right? He wants to fight things that are in front of him. He doesn't want to have to fight things that are all behind him. So characters that get behind him, characters that dive around him, these are annoying characters for him to deal with. Echoes, Tracers, Genjis, Sombras, these are annoying characters for him to deal with. But on any map that's a linear map, any payload map, any map where the geometry of the map is just facing in one direction and you're not too worried about flanks or you're not too worried about being trapped in the middle of any space, you're going to be kind of just the best thing to be doing. Just make sure that you're properly distancing around characters like Zarya, characters like Ryan, characters like Junker Queen. You're saving your cooldowns for them for when they want to engage. If you're using your rock... And then you get pinned, you fucked up, right? You need to have those cooldowns to stop those engages. But if you do, Sigma, S tier, definitely dominant character. We do need to talk about Winston. And I do think that Winston actually is a cornerstone for one of the counter compositions right now. Because dive characters are still good. Like, I understand that we're going to see a lot of non-dive characters in ranked. Like I said, Ash, Hanzo, um, freaking Cassidy. But a dive composition that is centered around um winston engaging and with someone like a discord with kiriko teleporting in um or a lucio going with you a tracer going with you some going with you an echo with a mercy whatever the case may be that's still strong and that can still bully characters like Cass and all these hit scan or long distance characters characters like hanzo so while a lot of these brawl composition and poke compositions play into them and just let like a Hanzo free shoot, this other composition is like a, it's like, I would say right now it's an anti 
meta composition. Dive is an anti-meta composition that is that is not probably the most powerful thing to be doing in ranked right now for most people in most ranks, but it is strong if you can put the pieces together in ranked, enough pieces that want to commit to a dive, you can shut down what this enemy team is doing and you can like not allow a Cassidy to just get unlimited free shots. You can stop and and overwhelm his hinder, his his grenade or deny a Hanzo taking this off angle and just just pot like pot shotting out over and over and over again you can deny these things i think winston is kind of the key to that um now let's talk about doomfist doomfist is in a weird spot because it's pretty rough it's like it's it's rough it's rough out there um before we had like at the tail end of last season we had the sombra seeing a lot of play and we still see a decent amount of sombra play but now like in particular when we have cassidy's grenade is like such a nightmare to deal with you already had so many other problems and uh and like all in all like you're just really really struggling doom is a very weak character right now unfortunately sure you could take over a lobby but you have to be really really skillful better than like the skill of the lobby by far in order to dominate the lobby and i really think there's just better characters that you could be playing right now to get more guaranteed value i'm putting him in the c tier i think he's about on par with arissa he definitely could carry harder than arissa in a lot of cases but he doesn't bring as much inherent value as arissa does i think he's a fine character and of course you could still dominate to the highest ranks of play if you get really good with him if you get really cracked with him because he has a lot of skill expression but just overall you're gonna have such a hard time like going in doing a lot of fake engages baiting out things like sleep dart only for you to just go back in and get stuck with the grenade and get killed i mean it's just a rough world out there you can't afford any mistakes there's so many things that could shut down your engages i the list goes on and on for why doom is really struggling right now and i think that whether you're playing a brawl a dive a poke doofus just doesn't fit better than anything else right now so i'm just putting him in the c tier and i think that's pretty fair hammond Hammond is a bit of a wild card because he does have a lot of things that shut him down. Same thing. May is very annoying. Sombra, Cassidy. And it's kind of like if you can get value dependent on how many of those things are present. If there's like a combination of like Cassidy, May, Brig, good luck having value. So I don't think that this is a season that you can one trick ball. I've actually had people come into my chat, talk to me about their problems with ball this season. I don't think you can one trick him i do think that you can play him and i think that he's reasonable to play especially if you have characters that you're enabling echo tracer being two ones that i would say are just amazing with ball of course but if the enemy team are mobilizing to counter you you need to be able to swap like if you're playing hammond into those things you're just gonna get rolled and i think that it's harder to counter you than it is to counter a doom you get more value automatically, and I think that Hammond could be a really good character in a balanced hero pool. Maybe your hero pool is Hammond Junker Queen, or Hammond Diva, or Hammond Sigma, or Hammond Ramatra, something like that. I think that would be really good. I'm going to actually put Hammond in between Ryan and Zarya here. I think he's good. You just need the things, the, the tools that you're enabling on your composition, and you need to be willing to swap when things get hard. Now let's talk about Ramatra. Ramatra, Ramatra, Ramatra. I think that Ramatra is probably the best tank right now, just by the numbers. Uh, object objectively, the most versatile tank for the same reasons that we put Kiriko as the best support, because she can go into every composition. Ramatra has game against every composition, can play in and against every composition, and that's really, really good. The character just gets, gives you a lot of options. And everything is kind of bounced to a point where I think, like, on the poke maps, you could say, yeah, Sigma's probably better on the poke maps. On the brawl maps, you could say, yeah, Queen is probably better. But it's not, like, by a huge margin. It's just barely. And you can make up that gap really easily with your mastery of the character. It's not an insurmountable gap that forces you to swap. And I do think that becoming someone that is really good at Ramatra means that you don't have to play this game of rock, paper, scissors, tank all the time where you're swapping your tank around because there's nothing that is really going to be your hard counter on Ramadra. I think you have lukewarm or a good game against everything. And uh, and for these reasons, I'm putting I'm putting Ramatra up in the S tier. I think Ramatra is just kind of become one of the best tanks that you could be playing because everything else is kind of brought back down to a reasonable level. Still strong, of course, and still there are other characters that you could play. Like you could you could say, hey, I'm gonna be a Ramatra man and I'm gonna play Ramatra most of the time and barely flex. Or you could be someone that's like, okay, I'm gonna play Sigma on poke maps. I'm gonna play Junker Queen on brawl maps. I'm gonna play 
diva on on high ground map so like those are your options is you can play like one character that kind of can do a lot of different things and then flex very very little or you can play a character that fits into every composition and do that instead i think that those are really the two routes to success right now as a tank this season whether you're going to be a very flexible tank that plays that game, the rock, paper, scissors game, or the map based game, or the comp based game, or you're a tank that's not that flexible, but you play an inherently flexible tank that has the flexibility built into him, like Ramatra. These are the two options I would give to you. And this overall is my tank tier list. You can kind of see Brawl Queen, Poke Queen, uh, King, and then uh, the hybrid, right? And so uh, overall, I do think that dive is kind of like a secondary strategy for most ranks right now. Still strong, but it's more of an anti-meta strategy. But uh, all in all, this is the compositions I would suggest to play, the tanks that I would suggest to play or avoid. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything down below. Don't forget to check out my giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe to my second channel for a chance to win three free battle passes. Links will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for coming by, and I'll see you next time. We are cooking. We are cooking. We are slowly cooking. We are cooked. We are fucking cooked. Okay.